Was there ever a moment where you stopped to think to yourself, is this really what I want to do? Every single day. I mean, if you work a job that you have no days off, you work 18 hours a day, if you never once have a doubt of like, should I be doing something else? I think you're an actual psychopath. There wasn't like a conscious moment where I was like, I'm gonna be a chef. Every day I just wanted to work in a kitchen and so that's what I did. Flynn McGarry is a true force in the kitchen. At age 11, he began holding dinner parties out of his home in LA for $160 a head. In the years following, he hosted a series of pop-ups in some of America's most esteemed restaurants. Now at 19, he has officially opened his own permanent place, Gem in Manhattan's Lower East Side. And with that, he's ready to be taken for more than just his age. You've kind of built up this persona as like a teen chef prodigy. One outlet called you the like Justin Bieber of food. Every outlet now is calling me the Justin Bieber. So what do you make of that characterization? I think people have this obsession with defining things they don't understand with things that they have already seen. I have literally nothing in common with Justin Bieber other than the fact that both of us did things young. And people need a, a reference point, and so they're just gonna find the closest thing that they can find to kind of put you in a box. That's always been an issue I've had with the cooking industry. Every time I do something, they try to kind of fit me into some thing, and I'd be like, no, I wanna do something different. How do you break out of that characterization? And that was the big thing with the restaurant. The only way to really solidify kind of my career was to do something permanent. If I take something as a restaurant and make it essentially myself, then maybe the focus will be more on that. I'm really curious. What does your creative process look like? It's interesting because I've worked for a lot of chefs who have a very formal process of creating new dishes. It's very clean, it's very organized. Mine is very all over the place. I'll be walking down the street and I'll be like, what if we did like plums and this? And then I'll go to a market, buy plums and, and a bunch of things, and then we'll make a huge mess in the kitchen trying all these different things and just mi mixing it. And I never really figure out a recipe for it, but I just figure out, okay, now it tastes good. And then kind of work from there. In the documentary Chef Flynn, your mom talks about, you know, the long, brutal nights you had working the pop-ups, blisters on your feet, a little sleep. You know, what was your biggest motivation to keep going? Because obviously, like, that's hard on an adult. That's even harder on a teenager. I mean, I think it is this sort of, like, never being really satisfied with yourself. I mean, today I had a meeting with all the staff because I was like, we are, like, pretty, like, we're doing good. So we need to change everything because we're not struggling or we're not working harder than we have to be. When you are sort of the underdog or the person who isn't just kind of doing the same thing as everyone else, if you're not working 10 times harder than everyone else, you're instantly gonna just be kind of cast off. And so it has always been this thing of I'm like, I'm the youngest person, I need to work harder than everyone else. Like right now I'm like, okay, we're full every night, people are liking everything, but like, what else can we do? We got good at something. So now why don't we get good at something else, and something else, and something else. What would you say was the biggest takeaway you learned from working your pop-ups in New York and in LA that led you to like this space? How important everything other than the food is. I spent more time figuring out every other element of the restaurant. You know how to cook food. That's like the last thing. You can't enjoy the food if everything else isn't happening at the same time. And I think that was the biggest thing for me with having my own space was like, okay, now we have this opportunity to make this perfect. What do you say to someone if they're a critic and they say, you know what, I'm not gonna trust a meal with this price tag cooked by you know, someone who's no older than 27? Not to mention the executive chef is 19. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think like, excuse my language, just like what the fuck's wrong? Like, I mean, it's like, look, like, if the food sucks, the food sucks. I've had terrible meals cooked by 50 year olds. I don't think that's an aged thing. I think that's a, you either know how to cook or you don't. And I think like, I welcome people to come and if they don't like meal, they don't like meal. And that's like totally fine. That's what food is, it's subjective. But at the same time, I think like, we do the same stuff every other restaurant has to do. This price point, like we have the same labor costs. We have the same like, rent, we have the same ingredients that are really expensive. We have the same everything that goes into it. We spend so much time cooking it, so much time preparing it, that like, 
if we can, and I hope it's what we're doing, if you can come and get an incredible meal from people this young cooking it, it's like, why would you not want that?